Imagine pursuing your dream of mountaineering even after losing nine fingers. Would this be an act of courage or foolishness? On May 21st, 2018, a Japanese mountaineer lost his life while attempting to climb Mount Everest's southwest face. Remarkably, this was his sixth try to conquer the world's highest peak after losing nine fingers. He was ascending the mountain alone, relying on just one finger and no oxygen. Some might see his determination to reach the summit admirable, while others might criticize his recklessness. Let's run through the events that led to this tragic incident in this video. Kuriki had reached the summit of six out of seven tallest mountains on each continent. However, critics argue that he was merely a social media influencer who exaggerated his achievements. The truth, however, is quite interesting. For that, let's get to know the person he was. Later in 2004, he climbed Denali, also known as Mount McKinley, the tallest peak in North America at 6,200 meters. Achieving this solo climb with only a few years of experience was a significant accomplishment. This experience ignited his passion for conquering large mountains outside of Japan. In 2005, he achieved successful ascent of Aconcuga, the highest mountain in South America, Elbrus, the tallest peak in Europe, and Africa's Kilimanjaro. The next year, he reached the summit of Oceania's tallest peak, the Karstens Pyramid. By 2007, he had conquered Choyoyu, his first 8,000 meter summit, and Antarctica's highest peak, Vincent Massif. At this point, he had scaled six out of the seven summits, leaving Everest as the last challenge. The same year, a documentary about Karuki aired on TV, massively boosting his popularity. He utilized his newfound fame to secure donations and sponsorships for his international expeditions. To make things better, climbing Manasulu and Dalargiri, both 8,000 meter peaks, further increased his fan base. He leveraged live streaming to attract media attention and enhance his reputation, becoming widely recognized. While mountaineers may not have the same level of recognition as football or basketball players, Kiriki managed to stand out among the Japanese population. However, his claims were met with controversy. He presented himself as someone who had independently conquered six of the seven summits using an alpine style approach without supplemental oxygen. Those familiar with mountaineering would find this assertion questionable. As you ascend a mountain, the air thins, making breathing harder. Oxygen tanks are often used by climbers to compensate for this. Still, they are typically necessary only for peaks above 7,000 meters. Since Everest is the only seventh summit above this elevation, Kiriki's assertion of oxygen-free ascents appears misleading, somewhat embellishing his achievements. His claims of solo alpine style ascents on each mountain also raise doubts. Alpine solo climbing involves carrying all your equipment and not receiving assistance beyond the base camp. However, Kiriki's companions revealed that he relied on fixed ropes installed by experienced guides, carried gear, and set up advanced camps. Notably, Kilimanjaro, one of the seven summits, requires all visitors to be accompanied by a guide, rendering another of his solo claims questionable. Despite failing multiple attempts though, his popularity continued to rise among many who had begun taking an interest in mountain climbing. Kiruki presented himself as an ambitious young climber facing challenges while scaling the world's tallest peaks. His first failed attempt was his 2009 effort to ascend Everest in September. Fatigue and altitude sickness forced him to turn back at 8,000 meters. In 2010, he encountered another failure on Annapurna a notoriously difficult 8,000 meter summit. Later the same year, he made another unsuccessful attempt on Everest, reaching a height of 7,700 meters. He faced two more disappointments in 2011. Despite these setbacks, his supporters continued to grow. Despite many failures, he maintained his image as a successful mountaineer through various media appearances and talks. 2012 wasn't proving well for him either, as the man embarked on Shish Hapangama, another 8,000 meter peak in Nepal, but once again, he fell short. This time, his mistakes were more glaring, leading many to question his choices. Proper acclimation to high altitudes and low oxygen levels is crucial for ascending 8,000 meter mountains. Kiriki's tight schedule, arriving in Nepal on April 30th with the summit attempt planned for May 24th, allowed him little time to acclimate. 
Due to this rush approach, altitude sickness struck him at 6,000 meters, well below the summit. On top of this, he had to descend to base camp to retrieve forgotten gear, a recklessly avoidable blunder. Unfortunately, this misstep wasted both energy and valuable weather days. He had planned to spend nights at camp at 6,700 and 7,500 meters during his ascent, but his rush timeline and the days lost due to the forgotten gear meant he couldn't proceed gradually. He attempted a rapid descent from the base camp at 6,200 meters to the summit at 8,027 meters and back in one day. While this is a feat only a few accomplished climbers could undertake in optimal conditions, Kiriki was weakened by altitude sickness. Despite advice from his team, he proceeded with the risky plan. Unfortunately, he didn't reach the summit, falling into a crevices and requiring rescue from a Sherpa. After this exposition, some veteran mountaineers voiced their opinion that Kiriki's popularity and media attention were disproportionate to his abilities. Kiriki started his most challenging voyage to prove to his many followers and the globe that he could do it. He attempted his fourth Mount Everest ascent in August 2012. His three prior attempts had taken the most popular and easiest route, the South Coal and North Coal. This time, he would climb the West Ridge, a much more challenging path. The decision appeared absurd. After failing three times on the easiest route, why choose a more difficult one? Kiruki might have done so to showcase his abilities. He brought a large video crew to document his expedition, but didn't learn from past errors. He planned another swift Everest summit attempt, which left him rushing to the top without enough time to acclimate to the altitude. Despite seeing frostbite on his fingers early on, he continued climbing, believing it wouldn't pose a problem. This choice had consequences. Kiruki's progress was slow due to altitude sickness and harsh weather conditions. He intended to set up his final camp at 8,000 meters, but setbacks forced him to halt at 7,500 meters and make a risky final push to the summit. However, his frostbitten fingers prevented him from gripping ropes or equipment, abandoning the final summit effort. After Sherpas helped him descend part of the way, he was flown to a local hospital. Doctors there informed him that his fingers were likely permanently lost. Upon returning to Japan, he received the same diagnosis from doctors. He tried unconventional folk remedies and spiritual therapies to avoid the dire outcome. He even posted pictures of his mummified fingers on social media, claiming improvement. However, it was clear to everyone that he would never regain his fingers. Even his supporters were puzzled and concerned by the strange and unsettling images he shared online. Except for his right thumb, he had lost all of his fingers. After a two-year hiatus from expeditions, he faded from the public eye. However, Hiroki wasn't finished. In 2014, he achieved a comeback by successfully summiting Broad Peak, an 8,000-meter mountain. But this resurgence was short-lived. The following year, he failed his fifth attempt on Everest in 2015. In 2016, he experienced failure on his second Annapurna attempt and his sixth Everest attempt. Undeterred, he made an eighth Everest attempt in 2017. Yet another failure. By this point, he was being made a mockery on the internet. As his credibility within the mountaineering community waned, his fan base dwindled, making it more difficult for him to secure expedition sponsorships. Feeling the need to regain attention, Hiroki embarked on his most perilous adventure in 2018, a ninth ascent of Everest via the southwest face without supplemental oxygen. While most of his prior attempts follow popular and easier routes that hundreds had completed, the southwest face was a challenge tackled by only a select few of the world's top climbers. This route demanded more skill due to its nearly vertical ascent up Everett's face. Attempting this route alone, without oxygen, and with just one finger was an audacious feat, but Kiriki knew that succeeding would have been a significant achievement for him and the field of mountaineering. Kiriki and his team set out for Everest in April 2018. However, his admirers, sponsors, and expedition funds had significantly dwindled by this point. His budget meant his ascent would be much shorter in duration than typical Everest expeditions. Troubles arose early on. After reaching base camp, Kiriki fell ill with the fever, severe enough to require evacuation to a local hospital, causing a delay. Once he had recovered, he resumed his climb. However, while camping at 7,400 meters, he became seriously ill, possibly due to altitude sickness. Fearing he wouldn't survive the night, he descended to base camp in darkness. A Sherpa team met him halfway. Unfortunately, 
Hiroki stopped responding to base camp radio communications during the night and was discovered dead the following morning. Evidence suggests that Kiruki had fallen down a cliff during the night. The news of his death brought forth mixed emotions in Japan. Few knew Kiruki was still attempting to climb Everest. Surprising, many believed he had retired after losing his fingers. In retrospect, would you say he was a daring adventurer willing to risk his life for internet fame and personal glory? Or can we commend his determination to conquer the seven summits despite the odds? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Until next time.